Hello, I'm Matt and welcome to my review of the Anet A8 3D printer. Now this is very good value as it's currently for sale for $155, so can it possibly be any good for that price? Well, let's find out. Now this is a 3D printer kit, so you do have to construct it yourself. But if you're the type of person that is looking for a 3D printer, you're unlikely to find that a difficult process. The manual is provided on an SD card, and it's um, very clear, although the Chinese to English translations are a bit strange sometimes. And there's also a video online on YouTube if you'd uh, rather you know, watch what needs to be done. Now, um, it should take about five hours, and once it's constructed, you are essentially ready to print. Um, the first thing to do is to home the machine, and uh, this can be done on the control panel. This user interface is very basic, but it's clear, and that's what's important. And uh, once you've homed the machine, you can put some filament in. Now, there are two types of filament for 3D printing. There's ABS and there's PLA. Now, ABS filament is stronger, but it does emit fumes whilst printing, and it's not really environmentally friendly. Whereas PLA doesn't emit fumes and is made out of organic compounds, so it's a bit better for the environment than ABS. Now, to insert the filament, it's just a case of preheating the extruder and then inserting it into this hole after pressing down on the screw. Uh, this can take a few tries um, to get it centered properly, but once it's in the nozzle, you're good to go. So the next step is to level the hotbed. And this can be done by moving the printer nozzle to each corner and using a piece of paper to test the height. And what you need to do is adjust the height of each corner so that it starts to sort of grab the paper with friction, but not too tightly. And once you've done this for all four corners, you should be good to go. So the next step is obviously to get your 3D file. And once you have, you can open it in a piece of software called Cura, which is a 3D printing priming software. And then you can export it to the SD card that came with the 3D printer, which can then be inserted into the control board. Now this is actually pretty handy because it means that you don't necessarily have to have the 3D printer connected to a computer in order to print, which is um, great because it makes it more independent. So now we can go through the menu and uh, go down to print file and then select your file. Now, as soon as the head itself has heated up, it will start printing immediately. Now, as you can see, it's printing onto some masking tape. And what that means is that the first layer adheres more quickly, which is quite important and uh, results in a better print. Now, what's the printer quality like, I hear you ask? Well, um, my first print, this is the first 3D print I've ever done just turned out perfectly. Um, I didn't have to do anything, just pressed print and it came out. Um, this is actually one that was provided with the kit on the SD card. Uh, so it's a, actually a little Chinese chess piece, um, but it looks really good and uh, there's no errors with it and it just worked, so that's great. Um, the second print I did, which was this little dragon, um, had a couple of problems. So as you can see, there are a few little um, bubbles on the back of the dragon and uh, that's caused by the filament not being cooled quickly enough. So the remedy for this would be um, to make a little fan mount, possibly with the, by 3D printing apart, and then um, having it cool down the filament as soon as it's laid onto the 3D object. So that would probably solve that. Um, but the detail, as you can see, is absolutely fantastic. Uh, and that's because the 3D printer can go down to 0.1 millimeters in layer height, which is a very high resolution and is <laughs> pretty good as um, far as DIY 3D printers go. So no faults there from me, um, just a learning process in terms of how to actually print with the printer properly. Now, if you did print with ABS plastic, it would be possible to give any 3D model an acetone vapor bath, which means that um, it would slightly melt the outer surface and smooth it off. So it looks like a proper injection mold um, piece. And that to me is very exciting because it takes 3D prints from, you know, a bit ropey to properly solid. And uh, it's probably something I'll try out in a future video. So stay tuned for that. So should you buy one of these printers, 
Well, that's entirely up to you. There are no major problems that I can see, even minor problems. There's, there's only one minor problem I have with this, and that's um, when wiring up the power supply, the mains wires are exposed, which isn't ideal. So the quick remedy was to simply put electrical tape on it. And that's really the only criticism I have with this. I've had no problems with the actual 3D prints themselves. It's just going to be, as I say, a learning process on how to uh, print with it properly. But that's part of the excitement of having a 3D printer. Now, do keep in mind that this was sent to me for free by Gearbest, a link to which is in the description, um, but this has been in no way a paid review and I've been able to say whatever I like about it because they aren't the manufacturer. Um, however, this video has been sponsored by something quite serious, which is a service called Ancestry DNA. And this is serious because this is your ancestry. This is your history. And with this, you can send a sample of your saliva back to them in a prepaid box. And in six to eight weeks, you get a breakdown of your ethnicity. So your ancestry, basically. Now, this would make an excellent alternative Christmas gift for somebody because, you know, material goods are one thing, but knowing your history is going to be for some people far more important. So if you're stuck on what to get somebody this Christmas, this could be a great thing to consider. Now, as it's uh, the run-up to Christmas, they do have a 10% festive discount, um, so it could be a really good opportunity to go ahead. Um, so check them out in the link in the description. Now, I'm going to be getting my results in a few weeks' time, um, which I'll be revealing in my next video, so um, it's going to be very exciting for me personally because I've, you know, beyond my parents, I really don't know um, where my family has come from, uh, apart from that my mum's parents were Polish. Um, but other than that, pff, no idea. So for me, it's going to be very exciting and I'm looking forward to it a lot. So um, check back uh, in my next video to find out the results. Uh, so that's it for this video. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, I hope it's given you a good overview of this um, really quite uh, good value 3D printer and uh, 3D printing in general. Um, one thing I haven't mentioned is this little um, speaker down here. Now this is something that you can do with 3D printers like this and uh, it's essentially a 360 degree speaker that doesn't have any directionality. And it's really quite remarkable to listen to actually, um, though it does sound a bit hollow. Uh, I think that's down to it being um, not sealed properly because I've not glued the drivers in yet, they're just held in by friction. But it's really fun to be able to experiment with this kind of design um, now that I've got a 3D printer. So it's going to be quite exciting and I hope you guys can enjoy seeing what I uh, come up with with this. Um, so thank you very much for watching. I'm Matt. I hope I see you next time.